Hello, my friends. Welcome to the show. This is the place where we share ideas and strategies on how to advance in your life, business, and career by using the knowledge and skills you already have. I believe that the true power to overcome obstacles and rise above our adversity is drawn from within ourselves. Developing belief in self and building self-confidence is an absolute must for every person who wants to live an impactful life. I'm your host, Isaac Wambour, and I'm honored to be your coach today. Hello everyone, welcome to our show today. This is your host Isaac Kombua and today I have a wonderful guest and a friend of ours from all the way from Australia and uh, her name is Tammy, Tammy Ritchie. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm so honored to be here today. Yeah, definitely. And um, I couldn't wait to do this with you. So let's just jump into it. Tell us about you. Who is Tammy? Wow. Tammy has many facets and for your viewers out there, I really hope that you can resonate with some of the things that I'm going to share. Mm -hmm. So I was born into chaos. Sadly, when I was a little girl, um, I was an abandoned child. I lost everyone that I ever knew in my life, my mum, my dad, and at that time, my identical twin. Little did I know the strength and resilience that comes from that, from that grief, that absolute grief. And little did I know how much of that strength and resilience would come to, to help me throughout my life through other adversities that were to come. You see, as we grow, as we evolve, we just continue to go from strength to strength. So I married a wonderful man and I got out of the chaos and was in the Air Force for 17 years as an aircraft maintenance engineer. And I was a female working in a male-dominated world, of which I loved. Mm -hmm. You know, I travelled the world. I did so many incredible experiences many women would never get to do. However, after 17 years and having our last child, for the very first time in my life, I made the decision that instead of being busy and studying and working and being in my head, mm -hmm. I allowed myself time. Yeah, and I want to I jump into that real quick. Um, I'm fascinated by you spending 17 years as an engineer, which was incredible, really, um, considering that, you know, women usually don't go into those kind of fields. Things are changing right now, but you spend 17 years as an engineer, and then you jump out of that and you become an entrepreneur. So can, can you walk us through the process? What was your decision-making process? What really made you feel like, okay, I'm not going to go back to engineering and I'm going to focus on this other thing? Sure. And so getting on to what you were saying, so I've got this baby. I finally understood he was my last child and I understood that I needed to give myself the gift of breathing, meditation, going to the beach, taking my shoes off and being out in nature. But I really didn't understand the whole purpose behind that until I needed it. So I was about to go back to my full-time job after having our last child and something in me stirred my soul. I was no longer fulfilled in that career. Mm. I'd gotten to the top of the ceiling and I kept on thinking, oh my goodness, I will be in this career until I retire. And I was no longer happy. Yeah. A new change needed to happen, but I had no idea how that change would come. That change came to me in the form of a massive tragedy that truly did wake me up. You see, why I wanted to share with you the time that I had off and the things that I, um, I dedicated myself to with the meditation and the breathing and the space is I now see space is where the magic is. Mm. Those things allowed me to tune into my heart space. Our heart space is 16 times more powerful than our brain. And our brain will always keep us safe. Mm. So when my heart was stirred about going back to the career and wanting change, my head was trying to keep me safe. 
and tell me to go back to my engineering. However, I sadly manifested a massive tragedy where I was unpacking boxes in my new home with my then baby boy and what had, was meant to be the most exciting day of our lives turned out to be absolute chaos yet again. Mm. As I was unpacking boxes, I got a feeling that something was wrong. My head, of course, was trying to dismiss it and tell me it's okay. But when I looked up and my baby boy was missing, my head was even trying to tell me that he'd be playing with toys in another room. However, because I had done the work on myself, my heart would not allow that to be accepted and push me to go looking. And so with that knowledge and that feeling, I went looking room to room, box to box, till I could find him. I only discovered him as I took my steps closer to our swimming pool. And my baby boy, my flesh and blood, the little guy that we created was all of a sudden floating and on top of the water. He was fully clothed with the nappy on, shoes on, the whole bit. I could not believe it. I raced inside and I screamed out for help for neighbours to come. My husband was at a hardware store getting, um, getting safety locks to make sure the house is safe. How could this happen at this time? No one was home. No one came to my screams. With that knowledge, I reached into the pool. I grabbed him out. He's lifeless in my arms. I'm running through the house, trying to find my phone. I called emergency on our home phone, to which it was a dead dull tone. The phone wasn't connected. Once again, I assumed someone would tell me that the phone wasn't connected and no one did. I still had him in my arms. I knew I was trained in CPR, but never, ever did I ever expect to think that I'd need to do it on my own child, let alone anyone else for that matter. Running through the house, screaming, thinking, how can I call my husband and tell him that our little boy that we created was no longer with us? It just couldn't be in my equation. I lay him down. My head was again trying to tell me, I'm not good enough. You can't do this. You won't save him, as I had always done. Mm. And at that moment, I decided to take a deep breath. And that's what I had learned during that year. I breathed deeply. It helped me get out of the chaos in my mind and allowed me to lay him down and realize that it didn't have to be perfect. Mm. That just doing something, anything was better than nothing. So I lay him down and I commenced CPR. On the first rotation, it wasn't perfect and nothing happened. Mm. But I persisted. On the second rotation, when I did the breath, he started breathing. And I could not believe it. And that changed my life forever. I then found my mobile phone. I was able to call the paramedics and still had to keep him alive for 15 minutes. Mm. When the paramedics arrived at my front door, they often expect the worst. They could not believe that he was alive. Wow. When they could see that he was crying, they held me and they cried as well. That moment changed my life forever because at that time they said, your story is so powerful. We need to immerse you into the media. We need to share your story to the world so others can learn that they're not unique you're not unique that this can happen to anyone hmm. so that was my key that was my aha moment because how could i then go back to my engineering when i had this massive story to share to the world with the support of the media and the government so i made the decision to jump into the unknown get over myself get over my fears and just do it anyway and realize that i didn't need to have everything lined up to do it but with that, that um, total energy on the outcome that I desire, that I could see delivering training, helping people all around the world with that energy and that power and that passion and that clarity, the rest is history because I attracted everyone that I needed to bring my story to the world and to um, get into the corporate space with training. I had no idea how I was going to do that. And if I would have allowed my head to kick in and tell me that, I wouldn't be where I am right now. But instead, I trusted, had the faith, let go, tuned into my heart space, and the rest is history. Yeah, that's uh, 
it's powerful and of course a sad story in the beginning I'm you know sorry about that but I'm glad that you you, you gathered the courage to to do the things that you did really to save your son yes and um, to to allow the birth of your message um, to happen because that's that's what you're doing right now really inspiring people telling your story and like you said helping them to understand that you are not you don't have any special skills or any set of spe special courage but they can do it as well even when they are scared a bit that's the message that i got out of it so thank you for having that courage to do that thank um, you so much so you 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 mentioned as you were telling your story that you were born into chaos and you've been able to overcome several things really to to do what you do today and there's something that you told me that uh, you said you you have attracted adversities but you've you've always overcome them through um, growing yourself and resilience and just going after the things that you want. So how have you been able to, to go past the adversities, the misfortunes, um, and, and, and being able to, to stick to the, to your goals and the plans and, and the mission that you are on of transforming people's lives? Yeah, thank you. That's such a powerful question because we can go through life and we can try to compare and we should never compare, but it was basically even up until maybe 12 months ago and just putting a magnifying glass over my life and realizing that, oh, wow, there was so many tragedies. Mm. But what I was so great at doing is overcoming the tragedies, as you were saying, mm. and sending the energy to the outcome that I desired. But the whole awareness of, wow, what if I was creating it? You see, what I realize and what I know is that we're beings. This is our outer skin. We have a soul. And our soul is what is the inner work is what needs to be healed. So when you can recognize that in your own life and recognize that, and I started to compare and actually was living in a vigilant state of what's next because it wasn't just my son's drowning. Mm -hmm. I had, I've saved my children. I've got three beautiful children. And, I, you know, I've been fighting to save one of them's life for many many years hmm. but there's been so many chaoses and even with my own health hmm. so what i actually realized was we have a thing and it's called the emotion code and it's the inner work we can set all the intentions that we want and um and and do all of our mantras to say you know i am great i'm powerful i am inspiring blah 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 mm -hmm. you can do all the rituals that you want and set the intentions to do that mm -hmm. however if you're attracting chaos and you can actually then start to see in your own life that wow perhaps i'm attracting that because mm -hmm. everything in our life we attract whether it's good or bad yeah but and i totally agree with you and, and i'm glad that you brought that up because I'm one of those people that I'm, I'm very logical. It, uh, for me to do something, it has to make sense. And wh when I was introduced to affirmations and meditation, um, it wasn't introduced in the, the in a way that I could understand it or it could yes. make sense to me. And, you know, people would tell me just 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 sit still and don't think about anything and allow to feel yourself. And in my head, I'm like, why are we doing this? What, what is it that we are trying to do? So. I decided to study a little bit on um, the law of attraction and, and the things that happen to us. And what I learned is that our mind is like a, a radio station. It really, it transmits frequency and you, you attract who you are. So the frequency that you're sending out there and even really meditation and affirmations, if they're not coming from deep within, they are just empty words, just like you said. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so there are so many people who go through affirmations every day, they meditate every day, but they're still having all kinds of chaos within because they're attracting that. So I'm glad that, and you are the expert at that. That's what you teach really. So thank you for helping people to understand that. So. Isaac has an incredible knack for quickly understanding a business and its goals while providing solutions for long-term growth and success. From startups to larger businesses, he has a vast array of training resources and leadership tools that make an investment in his services well worth it. You just heard Jarrett Holt's testimonial. He's the vice president of Zenernet and had a game-changing experience with Isaac recently. Jarrett and his company are on the way to more success than they could have planned for. 
and it's because of what Isaac comes with when he starts a new engagement. You'll be in good hands. After the show, stop by dynamomethods.com to see if you have the kinds of challenges he can solve. And now, back to the show. And I just wanted to just before you finish, we move on to the next thing is mm. you mentioned the law of attraction and the secret. And a lot of people, you know, they think that they can think something and they'll attract it. Mm -hmm. What's missing is the action, the massive burn your boat action. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I've done in my life. When I want something, it doesn't manifest. It doesn't just magically appear, mm -hmm. but it gives you the trust and the faith to know that it is worth working towards. Exactly. Yes, and, and then and you right. can yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, you know, it, it's like uh, the case of prayer for those who believe in God and mm -hmm. some people pray and they keep on praying and nothing is happening. You're like, you got to get up and go take action. Um, action creates emotion and ac action is the one that gets you results. So I'm glad that you are, you are keen on that. So, and also just, and just also on that too, putting the action in place allows the synchronicities to appear. Mm. so as you mentioned with the prayer you can pray you can pray all you like and do the action but it's being aware and awakened to what's around you what do you see mm. you know and 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 taking that action to actually instigate that phone call or or having that um like i'm going to share later about my business partner and what we've created as a result but that was like sitting on the precipice and and take, making that gutsy decision to to have that awkward conversation, mm -hmm. which allowed that to flow. So the part of it is yes, you can you can ask, you can ask for prayer, you can meditate, you can see what you want, you can visualize. The most powerful part of all of that is seeing, hearing, and the feeling part of it. So feeling as it's already done, surrendering, letting go. And then being open to seeing the synchronicities, taking that ballsy action to ask and get over yourself, and that's when the act, that's when the out, um, the outcome you know comes about. But also when you mentioned before about the inner work, and I want to just go a little bit deeper with this because um, yes, you can pray, you can um, do your rituals, you can do all these things to try to facilitate change. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, and what I recognized in myself, and I needed a therapist to help me with this, because sometimes it's not just on the outer layer, it's deep, it's coming from the inner. So that these tragedies or this chaos could be patterns that are set up in past generations, or ancestral kind of stuff. You know, and if it happens um, and, and it continues to happen and you're continuing to do your rituals and you're not noticing the change, perhaps you do also need someone to support you because that kind of support is done in an alpha state. Mm -hmm. um, you're sort of meditative um, yep. and, and it's something that it, it, they just come in and, and you've got to face that, that, that tragedy mm -hmm. and bring up all those feelings, but they literally change those feelings, which changes the pattern. Mm -hmm. So then you're attracting more of those nice emotions rather than the chaos and the unsafe. My, the ones I was manifesting my whole life is, mm -hmm. you know, feeling a feeling of unsafe, a feeling of disappointment, a feeling of mis lacking trust. And, mm -hmm. and now I look at it and go, wow, my husband is the most amazing person. And when I think about it, I actually joined the military, you know, thinking it was safe, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I have a safety business. <laughs> so my intentions were, I want the safety, but it was in my deeper soul mm -hmm. that I was attracting the unsafe things. Yeah. And, you know, and, and sometimes when people disappoint, it's like, what is it in me? So it's like, well, perhaps they might not be as um, has higher values as what I do. So instead of criticizing or being critical and feeling the disappointment, accepting that we're all doing things at our own pace yeah. and not being so hy hypercritical. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that powerful insight right there. I know it's mm. a whole subject and you are, you are the expert at this. And before yes. we're done with the show, I would like people really to have a way to get access to you and see how they can benefit from what you provide. So I have yeah. two more questions for you. And, um, you know, the premise of our show we, here, we, we, we focus on, on greatness. Basically it's called step into greatness. So, and, yeah. um, we, 
we believe that everybody has a potential. They can grow, they can be developed, they can become great in their own version. So here is the question for you. Um, what does greatness mean to you and why should everyone pursue it? Greatness means so much to every single person and as well as success. Someone might feel that they need the best bag, the best, um, best you know, um, cars, the best location where they live, but happiness and greatness is different for every single person. Mm -hmm. It is when you feel you've achieved enough, when you feel happy and joy and all those incredible emotions throughout your life as opposed to feeling resentful and comparing yourself. So the greatness is no comparison. Yep. You stay in your own lane. You tune into your own gifts of which we do have. And once you discover those gifts, you decide that you can do things yourself and not give your power away to, to other people and think that you can't do things yourself. Yeah. What if you just smashed that voice? What if you tuned into your heart? And what if you just did it anyway? You know, what if you saw and you, and you saw the vision of what you wanted to do in your life? And it doesn't need to be saving the world. My mantra was saving the world. And I realize that now that, you know, in, a, in the different businesses that I run now, I'm like, wow, the mantra is still the same. But that's what it was when I had that massive tragedy. I've got to save the world. But yeah. just because I'm on that path doesn't mean that everyone needs to be on that path. Mm -hmm. Being but, awakened to what is and being present and seeing what's around yeah. will allow you to awaken what your gifts are. Yep. Once you discover that, the greatness is within you already. I love that. And, and I, I hate, I mean, yeah, the specific. validation, yeah, the outside validation where people need the car or, you know, they need the bag or they need the whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's uh, the last question I have for you. So for someone who is experience some kind of internal chaos and turmoil and they're not at peace. They, they're, they're really trying to find something and a path to be peaceful within themselves, to attract the things that they want, the people that they want, um, and to live a good life really, and, and they ultimately make a difference in the world. If there's someone like that out there, what, what would be the best place for them to start? They have no clue how to get started. What do they need to do first? Firstly, they need to recognize that what they've attracted in their life, which is pretty, can be confronting mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because you might think that you're doing everything okay and you might continue to walk the path and be successful. But it, once you actually stop and go, wow, what if I could put down that heavy weight, that 25 kilo or two, 250 kilo weight mm -hmm. and just tune into what is? And then how do they, how do they move on from that? Continue to do the rituals and to, to breathe and to get out in nature and to get out of the head into the heart space. But when you find that there is the deeper chaos that you, you actually analyze yourself and you look over and think, wow, why am I continuing to attract these things? Mm -hmm. You do need support of other people. And that's um, the ways that, I mean, there's many different healing modalities that I've carried out throughout my whole life. Um, and each healing has actually, like an onion layer, revealed more and more and more of me and the truth, which is why I said to you before, there is no fear because I've, uh, you know, I've done so much work on myself. So people will resonate with different healings. And the most recent one that I've really responded well to is EMDR therapy, which is eye movement desensitization therapy. Mm -hmm. And that's taking the person to the trauma, to the tragedy and removing the emotions and changing the emotions. You can also do that through the emotion code, which is also pretty fascinating, but there's hypnosis. There's just so many different modalities, but um, to be able to access those parts in the alpha state, you do need someone to be able to assist you. Yeah. But in the same process, there's a lot of things you can do on your own um, to be able to really ignite your soul. So if people are interested in finding out more and having a quick chat with me, a discovery call on, you know, sharing some of the things, because there's many that I've learned along my journey that have really assisted me. Um, I'm more than happy to chat with them as well. Um, so I think you've got the website. They can contact me through the contact page mm -hmm. and um, just ask for the, the discovery chat. Yeah, and what's your website? I know we are going to put it on the notes, but just go ahead and tell us your website. So Probably the best, 
Yeah, I've got a number of websites, but the one, the best one to contact me on is my first aid. So it's first aid and then it's youcan2.com. So that's Y U C A N 2.com. You'll see the whole, the reason I show you, um, send you the, that one is because you'll see the whole media, you'll see the story, you'll see what we've achieved since then. But then also the contact page, um, that's the main email address that I get to. Um, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Do we, and, and, I, and I saw that you have a beautiful website, really. I, I would encourage everyone to go book that call, get to talk to, to Tammy and um, see how she can help you. She is highly successful. Um, so I know she knows what she is, she is talking about. She travels all over the world, making a difference. So I think you'll be in good hands if you do that. Yes. And is it possible to share my recent ventures with your audience? Because this is where a lot of people will benefit because it yeah. is a global company. Yeah, so using all the skills that I've used throughout, um, throughout, I did manifest my business partner that brought my vision to life. So I knew that I had a vision when I was speaking on the stage around the world, people wanted to know where they could purchase the products that I created and also helped mentor a lot of other people with businesses, with their wonderful products as well. So it became a job. So I knew I needed to create a marketplace where we can showcase people's businesses, products, services, online programs, the whole lot in the one location and we could direct people to that. So I had, again, visualized it for about 18 months and saw it as done and saw the audience and all the people, the customers, the merchants that had their own products, which then allowed them to focus on what they're good at. And that is the creation and allow the marketing to another person. So I could see everyone happy and I had no idea how to do that. Hmm. But like, as we talked about before with the prayer, you know, um, my business partner now flew to the Gold Coast. He asked me to speak on his stage on health in a number of different countries. Wow. And I said, that's awesome. Can I please speak to everyone about the marketplace I'm creating? He said, sure. Mm -hmm. At that point, he wanted to know what I had done. At that point, it was I had done a little bit, but it was still a vision. So I just need your audience to understand that you don't have to do everything yourself, that you can right. outsource. And so when the moment I let go and surrendered, and he gave me feedback and I knew his feedback was the feedback I needed to bring the vision to life. Mm -hmm. I made the gutsy decision to jump into the unknown, to get over myself, overcome the fear and to ask him to say, I love what you're saying. I have no idea what you're saying. You sound like you're the expert in <laughs> online marketing, IT, yeah. computer programming, which is what I needed. Yeah. Will you partner with me? And he could have easily said no, but with that energy that I was attracting, to him he said yes and so we launched in march 2020 i encourage your viewers to go and check it out it's um www.theavtarcollective.com it is if you have a business out there and you do have products and you do have services or you do have online programs it's for you to join there's no cost whatsoever zero you can go there read our white paper to see what we've achieved or what we're also launching and bringing out future vision and register your details to become um, a member at the moment we have millions of businesses that we support um, we have tools as in publishing companies um, our own um, radio station magazine the list is long and it's all for no cost or free we have a our own crypto attached to that and so the more transactions, the more businesses, the more we help our businesses shine, the more our crypto goes up in value. And that's how we make our money for ourselves and our investors. So I that's encourage fantastic. you, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, if you want to grow your business massive and, um, and if you want to work with me a little bit more to really just nail what your niche is, I'm more than happy to do that or any other coach as well. Um, so I'm just here to help. So thank you so much for allowing yeah, me to share. You. Yeah, thank you so much, Tammy, for sharing that. And um, again, go check out the website. Uh, when this episode comes out, you're going to have all the information. Thank you, Tammy. Um, I know it's still very early in Australia. Thank you for being here this early. Have a great day and we'll be in touch. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. That was Isaac Wamboa, founder of Dynamo Methods. And if what he and his guests talked about sounds like a problem you're having too, stop by dynamomethods.com to find out more.
you can book a complimentary 45-minute virtual training for your team. Or you can learn more about group workshops on team leadership, sales, communication, and much more. Don't wait. Let Isaac show you how to step into greatness today.